Hi, I'm Phyllis from southernfrugal.com. We are going to make a moist date bread. Now, it's almost like cake because it's sweet. It really is. First thing we're going to do is prepare our dates. Now, this is a cup and a half of dates, and there are whole dates that I got from nuts.com. So what I'm going to do is add water to them to come up to the one and a half cup line. So that's roughly about a half a cup of water. Now I'm going to put them in the microwave and really heat them up to reconstitute them. And when, when we get done with that, we'll be right back. Okay, our dates were uh, in the microwave for just about a minute. And of course they're very hot and now they're very soft. So what I end up with is one and a half cups of dates and water. So I'm going to dump that in, still hot, into the body mix, water and all. See how it's, can y'all see it steaming? All right. Let's see if I can. I said body mix, I meant food processor. I don't know what's the matter with me today. When I did the uh, smoothie this morning, I did the video, and I meant to say uh, put in half a cup of water. I said half a cup of butter. Can you believe that? I listened to that thing back. I thought, man, what have I got my mind on this morning? I think I had my mind on that little song we were singing. Anyway, so this is still warm, of course. So now, what we've got is one and a half cups of date pulp, really. That's what we've got. So, I haven't softened my butter. I just took it out of the refrigerator. I'm going to go ahead and put the butter in, just like that. Actually, I'll just break it in half. Okay. So now, I'm going to go ahead and add my spices in. Now, I wanted to explain about the spices. Put that paper in the garbage. Alright, what we've got is half, uh, half a teaspoon of cinnamon. No, excuse me, start over. One fourth teaspoon of cinnamon, one fourth teaspoon of ginger, and one eighth teaspoon of nutmeg. Now, what the ginger does is mellows out the cinnamon. And these spices uh, are going to enhance the taste of the date bread. It's, if you put more than that, it's going to taste like a spice pound cake. It really will. So you don't want to put much. So one eighth teaspoon of nutmeg, one fourth teaspoon of ground ginger, and one fourth teaspoon of ground cinnamon. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and put that in with my butter. I'm going to also add one teaspoon of vanilla. Get that all out of the way, and while we're at it, why don't we just go ahead and put in a teaspoon of salt, because we're going to be use, using two and a half cups of flour, so you need a little more salt. All right, so now we got all that out of the way. Now let's run this again. See, it still feels pretty warm. All right, that's what I'm looking for. It's just a smooth uh, consistency now. I don't know, maybe we can move this over a little bit. Let's see. No, that's as far as we go. So I'll just, I'll just move the lens closer. Okay, so now the next thing we want to do is add in our eggs. But you don't want to add them in when it's hot. So it's cooled down. It's just barely warm now. So we're going to go ahead and add in two large eggs. I'm just going to dump them in. Now it's time for the 
of sugar. So one and one fourth cups of just regular white sugar. And now it's beginning to look more like a cake, right? I think so. All right, here we go. Baking soda. Could y'all see then? You couldn't. I'm just really kind of out of it here this morning. All right, there's my flour. I'm going to add one teaspoon of baking soda to my flour. Now it's not baking powder, it's baking soda. And just kind of mix that around just a little bit. Now, the flour is two and one-half cups, and I will list this recipe right down below. Uh, you want to make sure that you sift your flour first and then measure it. That way you'll uh, have the measurements right if it's sifted first. Okay, so what we're going to do now is add about a third of the flour, and then we're going to add this is one half cup of buttermilk. We're going to add about a fourth of a cup of this, then flour again, and so on. And we want to begin and end with flour. Now, you don't want to do a whole lot of mixing once you start adding the flour in. Let me come closer so you can see. All right, there we go, right there. All right, one third of the flour is going to go in. Then I'm just going to quickly run it again. That's good. I think I'll pour my buttermilk in from the top. I'm going to use about half of it. That's it. Now we're going to add more flour. One more third. buttermilk in. And now we're ready for the rest of the flour. Just dump it all in. sides down just a little bit. And we're going to mix it just a little bit more. And that's it. We're ready. So I have greased and floured and lined the bottom of a 9 by 5 by 3 inch loaf pan. Now this is one of my old loaf pans because my new pans won't really hold this much of the recipe. So I lined it this time with a little parchment paper. Uh, I greased the bottom of it first a little bit, then put the parchment paper in, then grease the parchment paper and all around the side and sprinkle it with flour. That's to make sure that it comes out of the pan. Okay, so now we're ready to dump this in. You just hold the bottom of it. Put your finger in your little um, blade assembly there and hold that down. Just dump the whole thing in. Now the spices are intended to enhance the taste of the dates. And uh, my opinion is that the buttermilk also enhances the taste of the dates. Because after all, this is date bread. Now, there are no nuts in it, 
but if you want to put nuts in it, you can. Okay, there it is. It's going to be moist and sweet. Sorry, y'all couldn't see it. I can't have to believe I need me a cameraman or a girl or somebody to help me out here. Okay, so let me put this in the oven. I'll be right straight back. Okay, so you're going to want to bake this at about 350, well not about, 350 degrees for about one hour to one and a quarter hours. And you want to check it and you know, stick the toothpick in it and uh, see if it comes out clean. All right, so uh, we'll be back in just a minute because I wanted to talk to y'all about something. Hold on. All right, I wanted to talk to y'all about uh, making your own recipes. Um, you know, a lot of times, uh, especially women, now I don't think men are this way, but uh, women are afraid to alter a recipe in any way. They do it exact, and, and the ladies that do that are always very good cooks because they just won't deviate from the recipe at all. And my mother was somewhat like that. I don't think my grandmother was that way, but my mother was. So if it called for, you know, half a cup of butter or, you know, a cup of milk, she would measure it exact, and that's the way she did it. So, uh, you know, you, you can change a recipe to suit yourself. And just to, uh, I'm talking mainly about baking now, like baking cakes and bread and stuff like that. Uh, baking is exact. It really is. So uh, what you want to do is balance out your liquids with your dry ingredients. And uh, what I do is just start from a recipe that works and change whatever I need to change. So this particular recipe is the exact same recipe for the banana nut bread. It's exactly the same. So all I did was substitute the dates for the smashed bananas. So the recipe calls for one and a half cups of bananas and so I put one and a half cups of dates but I tried to make the consistency like the bananas would have been. So what else could you do with this? You could do a carrot cake. I mean, it would be carrot bread maybe, but it's really cake. It really is, because it's so sweet, really. And uh, so you could uh, grind up your carrots, really in the food processor, raw, and you know, just put a little water in You could do it in the Vitamix, and just grind them up really fine and measure out a cup and a half. It'd be that simple. So um, now you, you just want to watch the, how moist what you're adding is. Think of it as being, let it be the same consistency if it was one and a half cups of smashed bananas. What would the consistency of that be? So what I tried to do with the dates is just fill the little thing up, to, uh, the cup up with water to one and a half cups. And of course the water went all in between the dates and probably inside some of them too, but they were very dry. So once I put it in the food processor and ground it up, I could tell that the consistency was very much like the smashed bananas would have been. So that's the kind of thing I'm talking about. And also, of course, you know that you can certainly uh, change the spices and the, the flavorings in anything you cook, really. Uh, but I, my preference is I like really moist cakes, almost to the point where they would fall, you know? You know what I'm talking about? And, but not have fallen, you know? Just, but that's super, super moist. And I like my bread, uh, this type of bread, the banana nut bread and the uh, uh, date bread, I, I like them super moist. And by the way, to this uh, date bread, you can definitely add nuts if you'd like to. And I do sometimes make it with nuts. But um, the spices in it are not so you can really taste them. You, you won't be eating a piece of this and say, oh, this has got cinnamon in it, or oh, I can taste nutmeg, but it enhances the taste of the dates, and that's what I'm after. Because, I mean, it's date, date bread. I want to be able to taste the dates, for goodness sakes, don't I? Yeah, I think I do. So uh, anyway, you can, uh, I'd like to, and I'm really talking to you younger women. I really am. 
because uh, I think older ladies already know they can alter a recipe any way they want to. And that's kind of the way I feel too. And sometimes recipes don't turn out when you do that, but that's just part of it. That's how you learn. Uh, I remember when I was making the um, uh, chocolate, the German chocolate pound cake, man, I wanted, I wanted that cake so bad and I wanted it to turn out and I wanted it to be moist. And I probably had maybe three or four of them fall before I ever got it right. But I finally did get it right. Now, once I got it right, I don't deviate from that recipe because it was too hard to get there. But uh, anyway, uh, of course, uh, you know, you can, you're already probably altering things like uh, when you fried a pork chop, how you season it, or chicken, fried chicken, how you season that, or baked chicken, or, you know, a roast. You can do the same thing with cakes. You just have to make sure you keep your moist moisture and your your moist ingredients and your dry keep them sort of right with the recipe and you'll be okay now you can double recipes um, now I've never had it really work out very well when I tripled one and I'm not sure why but uh, you can certainly double recipes and I cut recipes in half all the time because it's just me and Mr. Bucky so I do that all the time you just have to be careful and get it right you know like how do you divide one-third of a cup of something. You know what I'm saying? It's not on the measuring cup that way. So you just then would, would have to do it by tablespoons really to get it right. All right, so when this uh, uh, date bread gets done, we'll be back. Okay, the uh, date bread is done now. It's coming loose from the sides and it springs back a little bit. So we're gonna let it cool in the pan, I don't know, probably 30 minutes or longer, just so it'll retain more of its moisture. So when this gets cool enough to cut, we'll be back. Okay, here's the cake. I did go ahead and cut it before it got completely cool, but I want you to see how moist it is. See that? It's very, very moist. And of course, you can't really detect the uh, smell of cinnamon or nutmeg or ginger but it's actually in there you can tell that it's date though so there it is okay we will see y'all next time